I'm speaking today with Elizabeth Wächter, former head of the public information section for the Comprehensive Tespin Treaty Organization in Vienna. Elizabeth oversaw the media and communication portfolio of the CTBTO between 2014 and 2018 and led the communications response to three suspected nuclear tests by the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. She's currently the Chief of Visitor Services at the UN headquarters in New York, and during her time with the CTBTO, Atomic reporters began working closely with the organization and worked on a variety of issues related to nuclear disarmament with them, including the creation of the CTBTO Youth Group, a group of now nearly 1,000 young people who are passionate about communicating on nuclear disarmament issues. My name is Alexander Nietzsche, and I'm the media and communication advisor for Atomic Reporters. So, Elizabeth, why, in your opinion, is there a need to communicate the nuclear agenda to a wider public? Well, thank you, first, Alexander, for um, inviting me to speak on this topic. It's, it's, uh, it remains very close to my heart, and uh, um, I'm happy to contribute in whatever way I can. Um, look, I think, first of all, nuclear weapons pose an existential threat to humanity and to life on the planet. That that's I don't think anybody would debate that. Um, they are horrific weapons that uh, should not exist. I think everybody, at least this side of the aisle, uh, agrees on that. Um, it's also a topic that has been at the top of the United Nations agenda um, since the very beginning. The very first General Assembly resolution actually dealt with uh, non-proliferation. Um, coming out of the end of the Second World War and the, the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, at the same time, the topic has kind of slipped a little bit on the back burner, both for policymakers and, and in, in kind of public consciousness. So it's, I find it essential and vital to continue talking about the issues and um, engaging people in thinking about what they want the world to look like in five years' time, in 10 years' time, in 100 years' time. And why, in your opinion, does there seem to be so little public concern at the moment about the nuclear agenda and about nuclear weapons, even though they present this uh, um, uh, uh, substantial threat? Well, the easy answer is um, it's... There are so many things happening in the world. There are so many more crises and challenges um, that um, people face in their personal lives. Uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, this is a very tangible threat. Um, climate change is becoming more visible and more tangible. Social justice. Um, there's a, a whole different layer of, of all kinds of different threats and challenges that have nothing to do with nuclear weapons. I, I sense a certain sense of, I don't know, fatigue, if you will, um, and people don't have time to also worry about nuclear weapons, um, but they should, because it's, it's, it is a threat, like I said, it's an existential threat, and it's something that people should be more aware of. Um, it's just not as visible and as present in in people's minds as as some of these other these other crises. Um, another thought that I had was uh, w w when I was growing up in Germany in the in the nineteen eighties, um, we we went and marched against um, nuclear weapons being stationed on German ground. We had movies. There was the day after. There were, you know, um, series on British TV that raised the level of awareness and raised also a little bit the, you know, it scared people. And people were very conscious of, of the fact that these weapons exist and that they're very terrifying. So, um, and that 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 is not the case anymore. Um, so I, I think it's just, it's not that people don't care, it's just that they're not necessarily aware of what's, uh, what, what, what's going on. I agree. I uh, also remember this time and these movies that were um, essentially all the time on TV or in the, in the cinema, so um, I can but agree. Um, in the 21st century, communicating about the nuclear file is an uphill struggle. So. In the time that you uh, spend, during the time you spend at the CTBTO, um, what were the tools you were 
able to use? How uh, would you say in terms of success rate, uh, did they fare? And uh, if you have any ideas how to implement this better, what would you do differently? Um, I think one of the things I'm 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 quite proud of during my time in CTBTO uh, was that we managed to raise the profile of the issue of nuclear testing. Um, the CTBTO has a very narrow mandate, and in a way, that's a blessing because it enabled us to focus on a specific topic within the whole big uh, um, concept, the whole big. Um, uh, theme of, of uh, nuclear weapons um, non-proliferation. Um, we saw a, a significant increase in media coverage during my time there. Um, and this was part of, or uh, I think the result of a, of a, const a kind of a concerted effort and a strategy to um, educate journalists in 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 uh, conjunction with organizations such as yourself to work with youth um, but also to focus very clearly on a few key messages i think we managed to very much streamline our communications um, and had uh, in uh, the executive secretary of the ctbto um, a, a, an amazingly powerful spokesman uh, for uh, the for the topic. So all of those things came together. Um, and, and I do think we made some inroads. It's still not front page news unless there's a nuclear test announced by the DPRK. But um, there was a rise in awareness. There was more debate. And it ended up with policymakers. And at the end of the day, that's what makes the difference. It's important to make general public aware, but we also have to educate policymakers. And I think that's um, uh, something that shouldn't be neglected. Now, Atomic Reporters has explicitly the mandate to um, work with journalists, to educate journalists about the nuclear file, to bring the uh, nuclear debate closer to the media so that they can use the uh, multipliers and reach out to the public. In working with the CTPTO, um, what do you think could organizations like Atomic Reporters bring to the debate about nuclear disarmament? I think th there are two aspects to nuclear, uh, the nuclear topic and non-proliferation and nuclear testing in particular. There's the policy area um, and then there's the science. Uh, and both of those are kind of give rich pickings for education because it's quite complicated to understand the entire architecture. It's complicated to work through all the science, um, the different types of um, ways of, of, of detecting a nuclear test. Uh, so, so I think that that is a very um, productive and very a concrete way uh, of working with, with journalists, but also with the, with the general public. The other thing I wanted to talk about is in the United Nations and in the international community, kind of in multilateralism, multilateral institutions in general, we've come to an, a, a kind of a, a realization that it's no longer enough to just raise awareness. It's no longer, communications is not about raising awareness. It's about engaging the public. It's about getting them to not just understand the issues, but to care about the issues and handing them tools on things that they can do. Uh, this has been very successfully or is being very successfully implemented in uh, uh, topics such as uh, migration and refugees, it's uh, humanitarian issues or, or, or uh, the sustainable development goals. In the context of the nuclear Kind of group of topics. It's a little bit more complicated because how can how can I as a as an individual citizen do anything about nuclear non-proliferation? Uh, but the approach that that Atomic Reporters took, and I was so happy to 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 work with the organization in this, uh, is to engage young people and to give them the tools and to support them in uh, working 
within their spheres. It's important to meet people where they are. And young people know where the conversations are happening. It, it makes no sense for me to post a TikTok video. People will laugh. But if I work with a young person and they create a TikTok video, that might have a, a completely different flavor and, and be much more successful. That brings us uh, very neatly to the CTPTO youth group, uh, the thousand or so engaged uh, young people that uh, are now um, uh, regularly exchanging ideas and initiatives uh, through actually modern media, WhatsApp, of course, uh, very popular, but also other uh, social media uh, tools. How do you think can we reach out better to even more younger people mm -hmm. and bring this topic to them? How can we get them more engaged? And uh, also, as you say, um, do something, um, uh, even if it is uh, signing petitions or becoming uh, um, uh, organized in, in, in lobbying groups. What do you think could be done best? Just the fact that you just said that there's over a thousand CTBTO youth group members. When, when we first started the group, there, was, there were five. So uh, this has grown exponentially uh, in a very, very short time, which, which makes me hopeful. Um, and it also shows that the topic is something that, that young people do care about, even if it's not reported regularly in the media, even if it's not in the, in the general public's consciousness, young people do care, obviously, because they're the ones who may have to have to deal with 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 any aftermath. Um, so uh, that's the first step. The second step is, I think, what needs to be done is to offer people diversity of 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 uh, training, of of help, of support. Um, if somebody is, and, and again, meet them where they are. If somebody is a young budding journalist, give them the tools to do, um, uh, um, you know, guerrilla journalism. Go out and ask people on the street. Post it to your social media. Uh, lots and lots of possibilities there. But also work with young policymakers, young uh, people in government, in the foreign service, uh, in the diplomatic academies, educate them so they come to their new role. They're the future ambassadors, the future politicians, the future leaders of, of, of countries that are going to be making these decisions. Make sure they understand the policy and the, 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 the topics you learn in your youth, the topics you absorb and you care about in university and, and, and in, your, in your formative years are things that will stay with you. I, I'm, I'm convinced of that. Um, and, and third, again, work with scientists. There are a lot of young scientists uh, who are keen to apply their knowledge and their, their skills to uh, raising awareness. And I think science communication uh, is an area where we've seen quite a lot of successes when it comes to climate change, but I think um, nuclear non-proliferation uh, and, and nuclear testing are another topic where, where there's more room for, for growth. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. This was very insightful. I agree. Science uh, communication uh, is something that's a growing, uh, is a, a area of growing need. And uh, I think uh, next year in the CWTO Science and Diplomacy uh, Forum, this will uh, hopefully also we uh, um, uh, get a, a prominent place at the table. Um, thank you for your time and for the insightful uh, exchange. Um, and uh, yeah, I wish you good luck uh, in New York. Well, I wish you all, you all the very, very best. And I want to um, encourage uh, um, all the young, young students and, and uh, um, uh, members of the youth group and anybody who's thinking of, of becoming involved to, to stick with it because it's, it's an important topic um, and it's also very rewarding. And it's a fantastic community to be working with. And so uh, thank you for all the great work you do. And uh, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.